Hey guys, I'm Greg Jones, editor of Engine Builder, and we're here today in Taylor, Michigan at Moran Motorsports. And over here to my left is the man himself, Mike Moran, who uh, started this business a number of years ago, and uh, he's been gracious enough to have us come in and uh, talk a little bit about what he's got going on. And uh, Mike, thanks for having us in. Oh, glad to have you. So tell us a little bit about the history of you being in this industry. I know you've been here a long time and you've been in this building for a long time and you know, kind of your MO is, you know, doing stuff that other people, you know, haven't done before. You're, you're always kind of pushing the, the boundaries. That's a uh, question that not too many people ask me how I got started. Yeah. And uh, it's uh, it's kind of a colorful past, if you will. Um, I was into sports a lot. I played football, um, thought I was going to go to pro someday and injuries took care of that. And I wanted that adrenaline rush I used to get from playing football. And uh, we uh, started racing and that was my other passion, working on cars in high school and in college. And, and I just got really deep into cars and fast cars. So I ended up uh, <laughs> starting street racing long before this yeah. other stuff on TV shows you see all the time. But right. yeah. um, we would do some crazy stuff. So for probably the late 80s to early 90s, I had the title of the fastest car in Michigan, Detroit. And that's when they did that fastest street car thing. And what that started as is uh, uh, Hot Rod Magazine had uh, uh, Joe Pettit, I think his name was, one of the editors, Jeff Smith, all them guys. They used to go around uh, different towns filming you know, different states like Chicago, Detroit, filming the fastest street cars of the day. And they put together and organized a street car shootout. They're like, we're going to get all you guys in the country to see who's the baddest. Yeah. Well, I immediately stopped you know, racing for money on the street, which was very successful doing and was the fastest around to going there. And then, uh, ended up placing fifth overall in the country, uh, with just, you know, what I used to race with on the street here. Mm -hmm. But once I got a taste of that, I actually, uh, that, that was it. I never went back. I, uh, I just kept, you know, endeavoring to go farther and farther. So, uh, yeah, I, I started the company in 94, after you know going out and racing uh, in 92 uh getting off the streets and then uh it's just grown as what you see today and yeah i mean i came from like a little one car garage to what you see you know right now yeah and it's uh it's been quite a ride i would have never somebody could have told me that i'd say they're lying that we'd be where we're at right. and not saying i don't know where we're going to be you know next year but i'm, I'm hoping since this company's grown every year no matter whether it was in bad times or good times, it's always gone, you know, bigger and better. Yeah. Well, and again, like I said, I think a lot of that is a testament to the hard work you've put in and the, the stuff that you guys do, you know, you you and your team to keep pushing the boundaries. Um, now, obviously, you guys can tell we're, we're in the, uh, the engine room here. Um, Mike, you want to talk a little bit about the building and how long you guys have been here and, and how yeah. square feet? It's an interesting that? story. Uh, when I was racing in the 90s, uh, you know, I was racing a nitrous car at Casper and I was setting all the records and winning all the races. And, and this building used to be one of my sponsors. I was five buildings down, uh, on the same street. I, I moved in in 99. Uh, but, uh, this was my sponsor. I used to come here and get all my ring and pinions. This used to be precision gear, uh, owned by Tom Ryder of Ryder Racing. And, uh, I remember being in the building down the street and Tom was retiring and, it was just timing or the stars aligned, whatever you want to call it. Tom uh, and I sat down and talked and I, I'm like, I need a bigger place. Um, and he offered to sell me where we're at now and it couldn't have worked better. I, I, you know, I owe him everything that he did that for me. Uh, so we took that, made the deal. Uh, and every year we're improving and expanding. And again, we're going to add on to the building again to add the hub dyno. Now that'd be the third expansion in 10 years. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're doing pretty good. Excellent. Now, obviously you're pretty well known in the industry for what you guys do, but can you talk to, you know, tell the folks a little bit about exactly what you guys work on? You know, there's a 383, you know, small block behind us, but that's not, you know, that's not a typical job for you guys. We will do, you know, mostly we're known for doing all high end work, uh, you know, professional custom engines or, uh, prototype stuff. Uh, we love doing those because it's great. We like to utilize our design team and our engineering staff. 
Uh, but we'll do a 383 stroker motor for somebody. Uh, typically, like what's behind us back there, that's uh, that's done for one of my guys that work, runs a CNC. It's a 383 stroker uh, for his Corvette. But we'll do that for anybody off the street uh, if they come in and they want you know something really nice, um, then we can do it for them. It's, it's, yeah. But we you know are mostly known for all the high end, high horsepower builds. That's what we're known for five six thousand horsepower. But we'll do a 300 horsepower engine all day long for right. you if you want. And in terms of application, it's primarily your, your drag racing application? Yes, yes. We do uh, land speed stuff, too. Uh, we've uh, had great success there going over 400 mile an hour on a door car uh, with some of our engines that are you know wide open for two minutes at 1,900 horsepower. So it's, uh, that's a testimonial in itself. Uh, but, you know, primarily our background is uh, drag racing, yes. Um, but uh, we do all types of uh, forms of racing, yeah. you know, anything. Yeah. Now... You guys might have seen, you know, Mike's been building uh, an engine of his own for his own race car, and that's something that's been in development for a number of years. And part of that reason is because it's, you know, had a lot of firsts involved in it in mm -hmm. terms of the design of the engine and uh, ancillary things like the dyno to be able to run it and, and all that stuff. That's a that's a unique thing, too, that I yeah. always forget. Um, a dyno didn't exist to run what I was building. Yeah. So we had to work with a company to make the dyno exist. So... It was one of those things. I just wanted that engine. I wanted an engine based off everything I've learned on the engines. I, you know, the attributes I didn't like on each combination. I wanted to put all the best attributes in one engine. So that meant a clean slate. So we did what we did for me. I didn't do it for anybody else. But by token of doing that, we've already exceeded what dynos could run uh, horsepower wise. So we had <laughs> immediately began working on a dyno with a company uh with the least amount of mods to get us what we need to run our uh, our engines so um it seems like everything we do ends up going that way yeah. it's just uh, a lot of times the infrastructure don't exist or like the by virtue of the injectors uh i was the first uh turbo car in nhra pro mod uh we were the only ones allowed to run for a year uh but with that being said um we didn't really have the injectors to support that much fuel flow so that meant we had to create that as well uh, I took a partner on at that time, and, and we worked together, and uh, you'll see a lot of that mainstream running right now, today, uh, which uh, spawned what we've done lately. We've had a lot of requests uh, for a better and bigger piece, so we have worked on it, and we have now got a, a new injector. Uh, we'll be releasing that in the weeks to come, so look for that uh, in the upcoming uh, features you guys might do. Yeah, and that's a great segue because, of course, we want to talk about some of the new developments that you guys are working on, and, and the injector is is one of those. So can you mm -hmm. t talk about some more details in terms of, you know, how that came about and what some of those changes are that you guys are making with these new ones? Well, the, the biggest thing is it's more about a reliability standpoint. Uh, it's very harsh environment. Uh, methanol is like acid for fuel. It's such a high oxygen oxygenated fuel that it likes to corrode things and jam them up. So we had to actually design something for durability. Um, and that's the biggest uh, problem because um, you get a failure with that at a high horsepower and it's an immediate uh, explosion or meltdown. So uh, that's been happening a lot over the last four or five years. And we hear complaint after complaint. And we're like, look, we don't make those things anymore. And everybody's like, well, when are you going to make one better? Mm -hmm. So that's what we did. So we've been designing and building for the last four years. Uh, and we're just now to the point where we can say we got a bulletproof fuel injector. Yeah. And we're just waiting on the paperwork to come back from uh, the patent office. And uh, we're ready to put this thing into production. Yeah. Now, Mike, can you talk a little bit about what those patented aspects are? You know, um, you know what, what in terms of flow and, you know, the design? It's not really so much flow. It's about uh, pattern. It's okay. about the fact of the uh, design of the uh, disbursement of fuel. And it's also about the uh, regenerative uh, seat uh, that's in it. It actually doesn't fail under normal conditions with methanol, uh, which is the biggest problem with everything out there. It just eats up the seats or they stick or the needle. So it's a combination of the things. Uh, most patents aren't for as a whole. They're like one attribute. Right. You know, so right. we've got that down. So we've got, we can flow up to a thousand pounds an hour and we've made as small as 500 pounds an hour. Uh, and the biggest thing is they're durable. Mm -hmm. And that's that's the thing. And it's uh, got a, a superior spray pattern, uh, quicker 
transient, uh, quicker, quicker response time. Uh, it's just, it's been a real, real pleasure to, to design something from scratch. Yeah. And like you said, this is something that's just a few weeks away from yes. being ready and, and the patents out there for approval. And yep. Yeah. We're just waiting for the, uh, filing to come back and then, uh, we can get it out there just so somebody doesn't try and, you know, copy it and knock it off. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And do you want to talk a little bit about that? specific application that it's for you mentioned the methanol is is yeah we just targeted uh high horsepower methanol application so that's okay. why hence the 500 pound uh, like a thousand pound area uh there's going to be two platforms one's a little smaller than the other and the expense would be the same there'd be uh, similar costs involved uh they're they're going to be priced a little bit lower than than most um, and they're going to be uh, just the two different sizes uh, but we can expand three different sizes on each one so uh, it, it's where it's starting point it's yeah. a spot it's a spark to, a part to start at and we're we're confident that it's going to do well yeah excellent mike are there any other developments happening that you want to mention or talk a little bit about um i'm still anxious to get back on the five three hemi um uh, you know we got one here uh, but you know, since it doesn't pay to work on it, uh, I got to do it when I have free time and I don't have a lot of free time. So right. we're hoping to run another one by the end of the year, get through the next uh, evolution of R&D on it. Okay. And uh, I think we're drawing pretty close to the finish on it. Yeah. Yep. Now, something that's going to also help you with engine development in the future and, you know, extra business in terms of tuning is a hub dyno that you guys are going to be installing yeah. and, and adding to, onto the building here. Yeah. Uh, tell the folks a little bit about yeah, those so plans. Yeah. It's uh, it's been a long time coming. Uh, we've always had the engine dyno for the last six years. It does up to six thousand horsepower. It's never been a problem there. But then there's always the little problems and nuances inside the car that you know you have to deal with at the track when you go with a customer to test and be like, "What do you mean your transmission doesn't work or your converter is too loose?" So we ended up working uh, with Mainline and we got a hub dyno built. Now, what I haven't told anybody uh, is going to get released, actually, uh, in the fall by Mainline. They said they, they did their homework on me and that uh, they've been looking for somebody to try this. So currently, they, they, they sell the 6,000 horsepower hubs, and there's seven or eight of them in the country. They built an 8,000 horsepower hub. Wow. So that's the one coming to us, and the main line is going to be doing a release in uh, September or the PRI show. Okay. Uh, so that's the, the prototype is the one that's on a boat on its way here in two weeks. We should have it mid-July. Yeah. Um, so uh, we actually dynoed with it over there online. Uh, I was tuning Rob Campisi's car, so we dynoed our engine, our car, and our hub dyno all in one place in Australia, and I did it all online at 3 in the morning from here. And uh, it was just kind of unique and funny that we were doing it. We were testing it just before they created it up and shipped it out. Right, right. Yep. So they, That's really they made about 4,000 horse, and uh, Todd at Mainline said, we're at half capacity, so I know we're good. Yeah. Yep. Now, how many engines do you have coming through here that would even get up to that 8,000 mark? I would say the majority of engines we do uh, make around 4,000 horse. Yeah. Um, the only one that could make that kind of power is my purpose-built design Hemi, mm -hmm. um, and that's going to be somewhere around 6,000 to 62. But I think Todd's, you know, at Mainline, he's just thinking ahead of the curve and knowing that, you know, why be at 100% capacity when you'd be at 70, mm -hmm. right? And so I think that was his purpose in doing it. He knows that, you know, nobody's been even over five, yeah. barely over five on a hub. Uh, so he knows we're going to probably go over six. Yeah. So. Yeah, and, and part of the hub dyno is a, is a own special room for it that – you're going to be adding to the building kind of in between your back yep. building and this front building? Yep. We're joining our main building with our back building uh, via the hub dyno uh, construction. And uh, again, like the dyno room, we designed it from ground up in CAD. And uh, we're waiting to break ground on that any day. We're just waiting for city approval. Uh, and then that, uh, that'll that go up pretty quick. That'll be yeah. a couple, three-week project. And then uh, throw some paint on it, and it'll be going. Well, Mike, it's always a pleasure to get to talk with you. Uh, hear about some of the developments that you guys have going on. Uh, you know, it's really awesome to be here in the facility. It's it's a great shop that you've built, and uh, yeah, we can't wait to see some of this stuff come down the line later this summer and into fall. And again, we appreciate your time. And guys, make sure you check out Moran Motorsports online and uh, on social media, and also check out Engine Builder. We'll be sharing a bunch of that content there as well and uh, we thank you guys for watching thanks for having me yeah look thank forward you. to future developments absolutely
Thanks, guys.